All right, guys, today we're going to learn about proportional linear relationships and having that proportionality. So we're going to talk about the characteristics first. To determine if a graph or a table or an equation or words, to determine if those things are proportional, we have to follow these characteristics. We first have to determine if they have a constant rate of change. Let's talk for a minute about what that means. A constant rate of change is where you have times 2, times 2, times 2, and each value is increasing by a multiple of 2, or each value is increasing by a multiple of 5. It's that throughout the whole pattern, it has the constant. Constant means the same rate, okay? And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. We also, with that being said, we have y equals kx. And what we're going to be looking for is we're really going to make sure that we are seeing multiplication in these equations and in the word problems, we want to make sure we see multiplication. We want to be sure we multiply the values. Another characteristic is that we want to make sure the graph goes through the origin. And for those of you, in case you forgot, the origin is 0, 0, right in the middle of the coordinate plane. So we always, that's a real easy way to check to see if it is proportional or it is non-proportional, is to make sure it goes through the origin 0, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the graph looks like. We have a section of our paper for the examples, which are the ones that are proportional. And we have a section of our paper for the ones that are the non-examples. The vocabulary for that is non-proportional. That means not proportional, okay? So let's first look at a graph. To me, the graph is typically the easiest one to determine. So let's look at this graph. We know based on our characteristics that the graph has to go through the origin, zero, zero. So let's take a close look at this graph. Let's put a dot on our origin, zero, zero. And does the line intersect through that point? Yes, it does. So therefore, we can determine that this graph, it is proportional. So we're going to stick it on this side. Let's take a look at another graph. If we look at the graph, let's go ahead and make a point at zero, zero. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And I want you to take a close look. Does the line intersect, that means go through, does it go through the origin zero, zero? It's close, but it misses it. Therefore, this graph is a non-proportional graph, non-proportional relationship. Let's take a look at the tables. If we look at this table, we see that our x values are in increasing order. They're in order, so we don't have to do anything with the order. Now let's go ahead and compare the relationship of the x and the y. So using that rule, go back to our rules, using that rule of multiplying, let's take a look at our table. How do we get from 1 to 2? using multiplication. Yeah, times 2. That's great. How do we get from 2 to 5? Anybody? Well, if you can't figure that in your head, that's okay. We can see that if we did 2 times 2, we would get 4, right? And here on our y, it says our y is 5. So eh, that's wrong because we know that we need to have a constant 
rate of change. That means that times 2 should work for each of these. And even look at the next one. If we did 3 times 2, our value should be 6, but the value on our table says 8. So is it proportional or non? It says it's proportional if it has a constant rate of change. Did it work? No, so that means it is non-proportional. Let's place that in our non-proportional box. Let's take a look at the next table. If we look at the table, we need to look to determine what we are multiplying each of our x's by. 1 to 2.5. How do we get there with multiplication? 1 times, yeah, 2.5 is 2.5. That's right. Let's try the next one. How do we get from 2 to 5? And I like to think of money on this one, or you can go out to the workspace and work it out. 2 times 2.5. If you have 2, $2.50, yeah, you're going to get $5. So 2 times 2.5 is 5. And we always need to check 3 at least, so don't be lazy, crazy. 3 to 7.5. 3, yep, times 2.5. If you're working it out to the side, you're absolutely right. It works again. So can you see the constant rate of change? So since it has a constant rate of change, it is proportional. So I'm going to put that down in my proportional box. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the equation. Don't panic because it's an equation. Let's go back up to our characteristics. It says that we need to multiply. That y equals kx means that we should see only multiplication. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. It says 4x plus 5z. Do you see multiplication? I don't see a multiplication symbol, but I do see 4 sitting beside an x. And I know two things side by side means to multiply. So there's my multiplication, but I also see adding 5. But in our characteristic, it says that we should only see multiplication. So therefore, this example is non-proportional. Let's take a look at another one. I see 3x equals y. What's our constant rate of change? 3. Do we see multiplication? Yeah, because there's two things side by side. Do we see anything else? Good. Since it says only multiplication, we know that this is a proportional relationship. So it goes in the box that says proportional. Now we've done graphs, we've done tables, and we've done an equation. The last one, you can do this, it's the words. Let's take a moment to read these words. It states, Jared can bake five cookies with each scoop of flour. Is the number of scoops of flour used proportional to the number of cookies baked? Let's think about that. Each scoop of flour. So each scoop is going to give me five cookies. So if I have two scoops, I'm going to have ten cookies. If I have three scoops, I'm going to have... 15 cookies. So guys, if I think I wrote an equation for this, it would be y equals 5x. So I'm going to go out to the side. I'm just going to write that down to kind of trigger my brain. y equals 5x. Do you see multiplication? Yes. Do we see anything added to this that's going to pull away from it? No. Since it's only multiplication, we know that it is... Proportional. Excellent. It is proportional. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at another one. Let's read the statement. 
Everett has already taken eleven pictures at home, and he expects to take eight pictures during every day of vacation. Is the total number of pictures taken proportional to the number of days spent on vacation? So, guys, how many pictures does this dude already have at his house? Yeah, you're right. He already has eleven at home. And then, how many is going to take home each day with him? So he's going to take home eight more pictures every day. So that means that eight is our constant. So it's beside our variable x. Let's look at that equation now that we've made from our words. Y equals eight x plus eleven. Does that only have multiplication? You're right, it has that adding 11. So we, we learned earlier that we had to have just multiplication for it to be proportional. So therefore, this one is non-proportional because of that adding 11. So that one is non-proportional. What I want for you to do now is I want you to think about everything that you just learned. And I want you to explain that right here, I want you to recap everything you just learned right here. Put it in your own words. You've got this, guys.